One of the questions every golfer should ask and answer is should you play with a gap wedge? Well, let me ask you this. In 1960, how many of the pros played with a pitching wedge? I'm sure you answered everyone. In 1960, if you had played, would you have played with a pitching wedge? Again, I'm sure most of you answered yes. In 1960, the pitching wedge had a loft of 52 degrees. Today's pitching wedge has a loft of 45 to 48 degrees. Today's gap wedge is yesterday's pitching wedge. If it was right for you and the pros to play with a pitching wedge in 1960, then it is right for you to play with a gap wedge today. If you don't have a gap wedge, then you're going to have a problem with distance control in the scoring zone. The loft gap of three to five degrees is common between every iron from sand wedge down to three iron. And this will give you an ideal distance gap of 10 to 15 yards. But if you don't have a gap wedge, then you have a loft gap between your pitching wedge and your sand wedge as much as 10 degrees and as much as 30 to 35 yards in distance. Now, if you need to hit a shot that goes between the distance of your pitching wedge and your sand wedge, you're going to have to manipulate your swing. You can't use your, a normal swing on, a, on one of those clubs. You're going to take that pitching wedge and choke down a little bit and, and slow the swing down a little bit. But now that ball is going to come in lower to the green and have less trajectory that, uh, that would have helped it stop better. It's going to come into the green with less spin, which would have helped it stop better. That ball is going to hit and release more than you want. You can't attack that shorter middle pin as well as you could. When you add the gap wedge, you increase the amount of time that you can use your normal stock swing, which is going to help you play better and score better.